In this video, I will teach you how to create maps with raster tiles. Now, this video builds on top of a previous video titled how to create maps with GeoJSON. So if you haven't watched it, feel free to pause this video. Go ahead, check it out and come right back. I will be waiting. Welcome back. Before we get started, I want to take you back in time. The year was 2010 and the month was December. The year was ending and Google announced version 5.0 of Google Maps. With 5.0, Google had changed everything. It switched from using raster tiles to using vector tiles. Until 4.0, Google used raster tiles. Now, raster tiles uh, are tiles made up of images. Now, what used to happen was the client side renderer would send multiple network requests to the backend to fetch these miniature uh, tiles, 256 by 256 uh, image tiles, and then the client side renderer would just sit there stitching all these images together. Now, the end results were not that desirable, but um, you know, for that time, it was pretty good and we really liked it. Now, why are we still talking about raster tiles? Isn't uh, vector tiles up on the pedestal? Shouldn't we discussing be uh, discussing about vector tiles? Well, uh, raster tiles, they're not dead yet. They're still alive. There are so many map providers out there who uh, rely on raster tiles. And, you know, it makes sense to understand raster tiles because we need to understand where we came from and also to understand the foundations of map building. Let's look at the final version which you will be building. If you'd like to follow along, I will leave a link to the uh, completed project in the description box below. So go ahead, launch it, clone it, and follow along. All right, let's get started. In front of you is the final version of the Coropleth map. Now, if you compare this map to the previous map which we built with GeoJSON, it will be different because with uh, raster tiles, we have more resolution now when you zoom in you get more information about the state the landmass uh, you know the freeway and the river information now let's pop open the trunk and look at the underlying data all right now as you can see there are multiple network requests which were sent and the backend has returned with these image tiles now the client takes all these images and stitches them together okay so that is uh, raster tiles now let's close that and let's look at how to implement it now for implementation i've uh, used leaflet uh, the javascript library to build maps instead of d3 because you know we've already seen how to build a map with d3 and it makes sense to go ahead and uh, venture out and find you know build maps with different libraries and also a quick note leaflet unlike d3 which uh, which is more of an imperative approach uh, leaflet uses configuration based approach where you have an instance for of the map and you provide options to it and based on the conf or options data the library builds the map for you all right um, before I forget there is also uh, an article about raster tiles which I've written in JavaScript store I will leave a link in the description box below if you'd like to have a reference to raster tiles and how to build them, feel free to check it out. All right, so let's get started with index.html. Like um, a previous file, uh, like a previous implementation, we have the styles, we have our h1 tag describing what it is, uh, and also we have div map, we have a details div where we are going to set uh, the population data as we get uh, on user interaction okay and i have pulled in leaflet dot uh, js as an uh, dependency over here as well as i also have a leaflet css file in the uh, link okay so let's check out the engine main dot js where all of the magic happens now, like I said before, leaflet follows a conf-based approach, a configuration-based approach. So as you can see, uh, we have the big L, uh, which is the global leaflet 
library and in that we are uh, calling map and then passing the class to it uh, or the ID to it in this case and also we are passing the options object where we say what is the minimum zoom maximum zoom and do we need zoom control uh, or not and also we set the uh, the uh, the viewport like you know when it initially renders what should be the uh, the coordinates which the user should be uh, viewing okay now this is the get color function now uh, previously we had helper methods in d3 where we had a domain and range and d3 used to give us the appropriate colors for uh, filling in those land masses but over here we just have a humble method to spit out the uh, colors based on the population uh, data which is uh, going to be retrieved by another api okay now the tile layer now as we talked about uh, this particular implementation has two layers the first layer is the tile layer which is a raster tile layer providing more information and then the second layer is the geojson layer with which we fill in those land masses uh, to provide the uh, the choropleth effect now the tile layer um, we are using the uh, readily available tile service uh, from OpenStreetMap by uh, you know using their service and also providing attribution now the data is already available uh, and it's up to you to either use the readily available service or to create your own service and there are a lot of docker containers out there which you can also leverage in this case we're not going to do all those uh, fancy implementation we're just using the available or you know out of the box readily available tile service okay so to the leaflet instance we set the tile layer and we say add to map and with that we basically will be presented with a beautiful map and we can zoom in and zoom out and leaflet does all of the uh, heavy lifting for you but we are not finished because uh, we have a heavy task at hand we need to build a choropleth map so uh, first thing first we need to get the population metric now we already have the uh, json uh, retrieved from population api api.population.io so we're just going to repurpose that now uh, when the response comes back we go ahead and build our population registry which is going to be used for lookup when we are going to be building all those land masses okay now as a next step we are going to send out a request for uh, the geojson now if you noticed uh, in the previous video we used d3.q to uh, queue up all those net, uh, multiple network requests and finally we had a differ function where uh, we started putting things together but in this case we are using uh, xml http request why well you know why not xml XTP, http request is uh, always going to be around so why not just use our vanilla javascript to uh, send those network requests so uh, over here you you basically create a new request and uh, get the uh, geojson and once the geojson the data comes back we create another layer and let leaflet know we do that by l.geojson and then we pass the geojson to leaflet and also uh, like I was uh, mentioning before we have hooks through which we can uh, you know get access to those data points while the library is building and we can customize it so here is a style hook and this particular callback function will be called every when a feature is rendered so when a feature comes in uh, we basically go back to our population registry look up uh, details the population details for that particular land mass and we set the color and that is it that's all it takes and after that on each filled feature we can also add in interactions leaflet is just amazing at this um, well actually you know if I were to compare d3 and leaflet both uh, they are amazing libraries because with leaflet you have a plethora of uh, plugins available to you and also their documentation is just amazing in d3 the most popular javascript library you know nobody could miss that it gives you granular control and customization uh, you know power to you so you can go with each any of the libraries and you will do just fine
Okay, so for the interactions on mouse move, uh, we go ahead and get the uh, information, you know, population uh, from the registry. Right. We go ahead get the females population, the males population, and we set it to the appropriate divs. And on mouse out, we reset all of the decorations, uh, the visual enhancements which we made on those feature and uh, that's about it and there's also a click callback function which you can leverage so that uh, brings us to a conclusion that brings us to an end to uh, this video how about vector tiles you may ask well uh, vector tiles is for the next video